This video shows off a simple and low-cost CNC pendant. I created it to show how easy it is to make pendants for Fluid NC. I'll talk about the technical details at the end of the video, but like anything for Fluid NC, this requires no special compile of the firmware. In the CNC world, a pendant is a small handheld device that allows limited control of the machine. Some machines are large and the control interface, typically a computer, is often out of reach. You can use a pendant right at the machine to set up your job for jogging, probing, and setting work offsets. You can also monitor, pause, and adjust feed rates on a running job. The electronics of this pendant are super simple. It uses an M5 dial device from M5 Stack. This device has a small touch screen, an encoder knob, and a few spare I.O. pins. The encoder knob also has a built-in switch that is activated by clicking the bezel. It is powered by an ESP32 S3 and costs about $35. Here is the schematic of the pendant. You only need to add two buttons and some simple wiring. Here is the basic layout of the pendant. Each screen has a status indicator at the top. In this case, it's idle. All the buttons and functions relate to the screen and the current status. You know the function of the buttons because they're shown on the screen. The red button in red text will say this is the homing button, the green button is the probe button, and the orange is the jog dial. So if I click now, I will be in jog mode. If I click again, I'm back in main. The first thing I'm going to do is home the machine. So I'll go to the homing menu, and I have several choices. If I touch the screen, you'll see it toggles between what I am going to home. There are also some LED-like indicators showing the switch status. In this case, no switches are in contact right now. So if I press the green button, the machine will home. Watch the LED indicators. And if I wanted to home just the x-axis, I can do that. There's also an e-stop in case I'm worried something's about to go wrong. I can click that. Now I'll go back to the main menu and now I can show off some of the jogging. Click the dial to go into jogging mode and there are two basic modes. Right now I'm in um, knob jog and that means if I spin the knob the um, uh, machine will move in the direction I select. So now I have the x-axis selected. I have a jog distance of one millimeter. And you can see just turning it moves it in one millimeter increments. I can change that by increment it. Now it's in 10 millimeter moves and the jog rate is um, 1000 millimeters per minute. If I tap here it changes which ones I can adjust. So now I'm going to slow down and I'm going to jog in 10 millimeter increments. Now if I want to lower that, I can go down to like 0.1. You can see I'm in very small and accurate jogs. I can go even smaller and do a hundredth of a millimeter jogs one at a time. Now if I'm going faster, like 10, I can do a quick move and it will add them all up smoothly. So you can see it's going to move several increments. At any time I can just cancel the jog. Now you click the screen to go through the various modes. Now I can switch to uh, continuous jogging by clicking up here. It's called button jogging. Now you see the menus change to jog plus and jog minus. So if I push it, it's a continuous jog as long as I hold the button down. I can change the rate to go faster or I can change it to go a lot slower. I'll never be able to jog past the end point. Even though I'm holding it down, 
it will not move past the uh, soft limits. And you can go any speed you want. Okay. I'm going to move the Z down a little. The other thing is it remembers each jog rate for each um, axis. So if I slow this one down and then change, you'll see that the jog rate is changing for each axis. So I'm going to try to do a probe at this point. I'll go to the probe screen. I went back to the main menu, hit probe. Now you're in a screen with a lot of different um, options. Anytime you turn the dial, you'll see you're adjusting a different setting. And now I'm going to uh, just use these values and I'm gonna probe the Z axis. You can actually probe um, any axis you like. It's gonna go down very slowly, probing. Watch the LED lit up so it's all done. Now I can do a retract and go back to the main menu. Now I'm gonna show you how you can control a running job. I'm going to start a very simple job. You see it switches into the run mode. And since this job is running off the SD card, you'll see that there's a progress bar. It's a pretty short job. You can see all the DROs moving around. Now I can hold it and restart it. I could also e-stop it. Then I can also adjust using the dial, the feed it rate override. You can actually hear it when it changes. I can slow it way down. I can speed it way up. And if I want to return to the original feed rate, I just click that. It interfaces with Fluid NC using a UART channel. All interfaces, like the serial port or the web browser interface, use channels. Channels use the standard Gerbil communication protocol and can also access any Fluid NC features available through the serial port. Channels can also have an auto-update feature. Rather than requesting status on a regular interval, channels can automatically send updates whenever status changes. This means you get an instant update when a state or switch changes and have very responsive DROs. You only need two I.O. pins. The ESP32 has three UARTs and can assign them to just about any pins. This requires the channel clients to have a controller, but smart displays are very cheap these days. By putting the pendant code in the pendant, FluidNC can support unlimited pendants without any firmware changes. We have starter code if you want to make your own display or pendant. It is written to be independent of CPU type and there are examples using Arduino, ESP32, and STM32. The starter code does all the interfacing with FluidNC. There is also a wiki page for the pendant. Thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe to my channel and click the notification bell to be updated on future projects and updates. There is more info and links in the description section. See our wiki for more information on Fluid NC. We also have a Discord server. There is a link to that in the wiki. Also, feel free to ask questions in the comments section.